Oh, welcome back everyone. If you've seen my videos before, you've probably seen me do the Equatio one quite a few years back, but there's a couple of new options at the bottom here I want to show you. Equatio Mobile and STEM Tools. Also this little option here, Screenshot Reader. If you've used Read and Write before, then you know what that does, but it's a right handy option. Now before you start, bottom left hand corner, select Options. Just make sure you put your license key in there, your product code, and it's correct. Maths options. Now, choose what you're doing. For example, you might be doing maths, chemistry, and formulas, and select them all. If you know that you're not actually going to do chemistry or formulas or vice versa, then untick what you don't want. It just simplifies in, depending on what you're doing on your academic studies. But I'll leave them on anyway. Toolbar options. Again, I would leave them all there to access, but if there's something you're not going to use, Equation Mobile, you could untick it then it won't show on your toolbar at the bottom. Okay, it just simplifies with what you're using. Desktop options, where do you want to send your maths equations to? Word or PowerPoint? So I'm going to select Word and you've got Auto Play option which actually reads back for you so you can leave that to Auto Play and choose your speed there. I think that's good enough. Let's get stuck in. So first thing we'll do is, as you remember earlier, I selected Word. I'm going to open up a blank Word document. Now we're ready to go. So I'm going to tap into there. Now, first option here is Equation Editor. And this is your main option if you're doing maths. Now, if you're doing maths before, then you know it's quite difficult to add the symbols and equations into a Word document or a Word processor. You have to use a separate program like a scientific notebook or an application like this. But this enables you to do all your maths in here and then insert it into your Word processor. So, for example, I'm just going to put anything that ain't going to make sense so bear with me on this one so I'm going to put 6000 and then I want to divide that so I'm going to do DI and you can see automatically gives me suggestions to choose from and there we go there's loads there so really handy option again but I'm just going to put divide then I might put 678 again I might put plus so I'm going to put P L U and again we've got plus and then again this won't make sense I might want to put a quadratic formula in there there you go QUAD and I've added the quadratic formula in there so you can create your actual maths and equations within this box. If you want to add specific text you can insert text manually there if you wish. Text colour if you want and you can also add that to your favourites. Tap on that and give it a name. I'll just call that Testo. You might have a favourite equation. Then we've got here you can then clear that if you wish. Now, three little dots, you've got some more symbols in here to work with, and you can type in there the symbols you're looking for as well. Tap off that. So that's great, you've done your equation, but we need at the top here in Microsoft Word. Bottom right hand corner, select the Insert Maps option, and it should input it into your document for you. Right, it's not the best, is it, there, but I can do backspace quickly, and I can join that back together, no problem. And there we go. I've now got my equation. It don't make much sense, or does it? So that's your first option. But when you're working with something here, you might decide, actually, oh, that number's incorrect. I need a 9 there. So I'm going to tap that in there. See the option here? You can save that as a new equation. Professional, linear format, if you need it in linear. All professional, or all linear or justification left and right. So you could use these options to center it and stuff as well. But what I'm going to do is, because I've added a 9 here, I want to stick it back into my editor actually in Equatio. So I'm going to select Edit Maps. And it should bring it back in. And it should also bring it back in with that 9. And there you go. There's the 9. So there again, I could carry on working on that. And I can keep going. And again, I can reinsert that. And if you watch, it will update it within a Word document. So great option to work with. So close that. That's your first option. And then come along to Latex. Now again, if you look on the right here, there's that equation I made up. Look on the left. If you understand Latex language, it means a lot more to you than it ever will to me. But it's a specific language for maths to work with. So again, you can work on the right and still get your, if you like, your former linear format on the left. Now, I'm going to come up to this option here, which is Graph Editor. Tap on it. Now, obviously, this don't make no sense, so it's not creating anything in the graph. So I'm going to select a little X to get rid of that. 
I'm just going to keep it simple because that's all I can manage. So I'm going to do y equals 2. And there you go, y equals 2. And then I could add another one. Tap here and I might do x equals 1. And keep going. And you can add your steps there as well if you wish. And you've got an option here to even drag the line where you want manually. If you want it something specific, you have to keep putting in the data as well. So a quick point on it, if I click plus, you've got expressions here, notes, you can have a table as well, so you can see all your all your inputs as a table and a folder. So if I click table and you see the table comes up there to work with. Also if I click plus, you might want an expression that you can put in there as well. Come to the right, got your edit list that you can edit as well and delete everything if you wish. Or just delete something you don't need, so click X to get rid of that one and click done. Now again, come top right hand corner, you've got this little option here, graph settings. Choose if you want reverse contrast, that works quite well, doesn't it actually? If you've got visual impairment, you might want to use braille mode as well, which is quite handy. So I'm just going to tick down, I'll get rid of reverse contrast. Grid or no grid or you can choose your axis numbers or no numbers so you can really define how you want your graph to look even select arrows can you see at the end there if you wish also you can name your axis so I'm going to put that just put that A and then my Y axis I just do as B and at the bottom we've got radians or degrees as well and I'm done so I tap off that you see the A and you can see the B that I've added. Now the good part about doing your diagrams and graphs, so I'm going to go back to the first option and I'm going to get rid of this, so I'm going to delete it all and I'm going to delete this in the Word document as well by backspacing it. I'll go back to my graph Now I'm going to insert it by selecting insert graph and there you go, you can insert your graph into a Word document if you want to work with that as well. Now I'm going to come along to the next option, handwriting recognition. Now you can write here, if you've got a tablet, and they get your maths on the right. So I've only got the trap pad, so I'm going to give it a go. Forgive me how bad it's going to look. So I'm going to do a 6. Divided. If I can't even do a circle, look at that. Divided by 6. That oh, ain't too bad, considering how bad that is on the left. But if you've got a pen to work with, that would be really good. And there you go, get your maps here on the right. And again, I can insert it into my document that I've got open, be it PowerPoint or Microsoft Word. Now I'm going to come along to the next option, which is speech input. Now, I recommend having a headset on for this because it will pick up background noise. So I should be able to say some maths and it will create it on the right. So here I'm going to click this little button. 666 divided by 422 equals quadratic formula not too bad unlike me you know what you would be talking about so that would be a bit more accurate make a lot more sense but again the option is easy I could click insert into maths and that will insert that equation into the word document formula I'm working with underneath so there's another great option to work with but I'm going to bin that. Now I'm going to come to this next option so I'm going to have to get the mobile for this and give you a rough idea. What you can do with the mobile is you can scan equations you've done on a Word document or a piece of paper from the web, internet. And what Equatio app will do is look at it, identify it for you. Then it enables you to work with that. So then you can share it back or email it back to yourself and work with those equations. Especially off paper which is a really handy option to work with in a Word document. That way you can edit it and use it. So first thing we need to do is actually scan code. So once you've scanned code, we need to scan and select the link to bring it up. And then you should access, make sure again, as I said, you're using Google Chrome for Android and Safari for iOS. Now you're allowed to access loads of options. Now I'm missing some of the options because I haven't got the full premium version. But what you can do is you can click active documents and you should get up an active document that you've got up on your laptop or screen be it a word document google docs should show up so whatever you scan off or do will then 
automatically insert itself into that active document. What I'm going to do quickly to show you, I'm going to scan something off quickly. I've written down just a quick equation. So next for me, as I can't put into an active document, I'll click plus, do a new document, allow to access my camera. I'll take a snapshot of this. And you can use this option here to see how much you actually want in there. Then drag that bigger or larger. Then set that little tick at the bottom. And we have to choose it as a scanned document. So if you've got that active document up, it will insert into a document on your computer. But remember, you have to be on the same account. So let's scan document. And there you go. It turns it into some fonts for me. So then if you've got your active document open on your desktop, you actually see that in your Word document or Google Docs that you can then work with. Then you can bring it back into Equatio with the editing option that I showed you at the beginning. I'm going to tick that and I'm going to send it because I haven't got that option. So I'm just going to call this test one and done. A little tick at the bottom. It's now going to export it for me. And now I can share the document. Click share. I could even email it to myself if I wish. For example, there. Or as I said before, delete. Or you can send it to an active document. Use a screenshot where really, to put a rectangle around it and it'll read back that equation for you online. Another great option. Now we'll jump to the last option, which is STEM tools. Three options here. One is your periodic table. Really handy, but also if you tap on it, open it up, it'll give you more information on that and you can even go to a link to read more on Wikipedia but you can actually add to equation editor and you can see it added there on the left if you wish so if you have to work with the periodic table and chemistry and stuff another great option there as well also in STEM tools you've got a scientific calculator you know how useful that is get rid of that and last but not least You've got your molecule view as well, so if you're working with molecules and stuff, that's another great option to work with in. So I'm going to pop anything in, have a little search, see what we get. Here we go. Chem carb. And there you go. Again, I know nothing about molecules, but to you this will be quite useful and really beneficial. And I'm going to close that. So there's a quick overview of using Equatio. Hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.